My name is Just Detroit. Welcome back to another week of my popping class. Thank you for tuning in. You didn't have to, but thank you for taking your time to invest in yourself and in me. If you were with me last week, we went over some foundational movements and popping. Uh, this today we're going to get into a little bit more of the creativity and popping. Um. But before we start, make sure you have plenty of space to move around. Make sure you got your water. Always have your water. And um, you need one more thing. You don't say this, but you need a positive attitude. Come down a little bit of your uh, volume music. Just a little bit while you're talking. Cool. All right. So first thing we're going to do, uh, start with something a little new. We're going to take a good... Uh, Three. All I'm asking is three deep breaths before we get started, get warmed up. So, out here, center, build me. Bring three to your core. That's one. That's two. And that's three. All right. Also, one more thing. Our class here at MCSD are about peace, love, unity, and having fun. Most important, well, not most important, but having fun is a big part, especially at our studio. So if you're not getting these moves 100%, that is totally fine. It's all about the fun. I'm here to buy it with y'all. We're here to rock it out, okay? Um, so uh, for my first online class, especially for my students, we talked about our hits. It's coming from our chest, our chest, our chest, our arms, our legs. Some people hit with the necks, but the basic three ways to hit arms, chest, and legs we went over. Uh, but today we're going to talk about a creative movement using your hits. Last week I mentioned to you a a concept that was brought to me by OG Crisco of Detroit of the the ball that we try and hit in. Remember that. Bow, right? So, just to reiterate from last week, if you remember, uh, you got your hits somewhat down. You don't necessarily have to have your hits down to practice this, but you know, once you get your hits down, you can implement it into your into your ball. So, for last week, OG Crisco told me years ago to act like I was inside of a, a ball. You know, like kind of like a, a dribble or a hamster. But uh, my objective is to hit every single point in this ball with everything that I have. Knees, ankles, heels, hips, toes, teeth, ears, nose, tips of my hair, right? All about full expression and creativity that goes throughout all dances. But with popping, I'm going to get those hits, right? So basic movements is, of course, uh, you know, getting comfortable with your body. Oh, wait. We gotta warm up a little bit at least. So swing your arms. Yes. Make sure you're breathing through these movements. Well, I guess we'll do a little thing too. Ooh. Ooh. Get the arms, like I tell my students. Loosen your arms up. Um, yeah, loosen some hops with me. Get that energy open. Loosen your arms up, your shoulders. All right, next thing we're going to do is uh, stretch our neck out. So, right here, shoulder, and we're going to roll uh, in front, go around. Go, lady. Stretch it out. And stop. And we're going to go the other way. Mm. All right. Now, uh, actually, we're going to we're going to form up with our hitting drills. Um, 
arms, chest, legs, and then we'll start to get into the creative concepts. So our drills that we have in class from my, from my students at MCSDA and for others who are just tuning in are our hits. We go, and we take our time, we go, one, two, boop, boop, ba, ba, boop. And we just come back home, right? So two hits here, two hits here, two hits here. And this is just basic, we eventually go off here, and this, but this is just the basic that I'm giving you right now. So on each bass and snare, you're gonna go hit, 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 hit. So you're hitting on the four beats. Boom, 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 boom. So starting here, ready? One, two, four, three, five. Remember uh, our leg hits? We did two ways to level drop and then the leg back. Be careful with our leg back because we don't want to hyperextend our knees. So we talked about last week or the week before. Time is time doesn't mean anything anymore nowadays. But so lowering your level for our leg hits. This one, remember? Bow. Right? This is just me doing basic form because this is what I'm actually doing. But when I apply the technique of micro drop, which is what I call it. Right? If you can boo. Um, we'll do a couple of those. Just, just vibe with me on this, on the snares. Okay? Or the half beats. Boo. So make sure you're, I'll exaggerate a little bit more. Dropping. Snare. Bow. concept also applies to hip hop. Bow, right? Alright, now make it micro, make it a little the, the drop a little bit shorter. Bow, and catch it. Boom. Oh, this is one that I use the most, and just because I use it the most don't mean you've got to. Everybody has creative freedom of movement, but I'm just showing you from my perspective as uh, just how any videos that you go out and watch, you're going to get different perspectives of multiple styles. So always take everything, even what I say with a grain of salt, you are here for your artistic or releasing journey. So. Let's just have fun. So my back leg, remember I talked about that, that soft engaging yourself because I don't want you to hyperextend your knee. That's how a lot of OGs back in the day pulled the kneecaps out because they were just going, they were going in, you know. So go, don't go too in, you know, until you're comfortable, until you know how to, how to uh, until your knees are strengthened enough where you can really hit it foul, right? So like I said, you're gonna lift, you're gonna be able to ball your foot, Right? And then you're gonna act like you're stepping on a, a marshmallow. A little bit more firm marshmallow. So, bow. Boom. Boom. Bow. This is me just demonstrating the movement. Boom. Boom, right? Bow. So, as I continue to take my time, and this is me, I'm not really applying any real pressure. This is just me meeting the beat on my heel. Bow. Bow. Right? It's almost like you're just chilling. Even though people usually toe tap. Um, I shouldn't heel tap, but bow. Bow. Other side. Boom. 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 Uh. Mm. Bow. Bow. Of course, we have that by a little bit of force there. Just let it 
the beat on the ground. Bow. Boom. Bow. Bow. Right? After we do this, we're gonna go back to the right leg. Boom. And as you continue to practice these movements, uh, some of these movements are gonna start to pull some groove out of you. Because these movements, all these dance moves that we do are releasing. The releasings of positive and negative energies. Alright? Ooh, soft feet. Bow. Ooh. Boom. Alright, we're going back to the right leg. Now, this time we're just going to apply a little bit more pressure, like just enough to make a sound of your heel hitting the ground. And when it's hitting the ground, you want to make sure it meets on that beat. So when it goes. notice when I put my heel on the ground you kind of see my whole body shake that's the reverb from the impact of your foot in the ground and that's and that's what's going to give you a, um, a stronger hit when you combine your legs and your chest <laughs> but I was on it though. You know? But <laughs> when the music goes away, you know, you make the music. It's still counting back there. Mm -hmm. Alright, that was well that was on the legs. Let's not forget chest. I know we're in a hoodie. You should still be able to see my chest move up and down. So I'm turning to the side just so you can see the dimension of what my chest is doing. I'll give you a little I'll give you a little bit of an angle. So I, this is me at my normal posture, right? Just standing normal like as if I was talking to someone. Now, uh, what we call isolation, the chest isolation. Did we talk about isolation? I don't think we did. There's two, uh, at least for me, at least to me, there's two definitions of isolations when it comes to uh, popping. One is uh, like joint isolations. Uh, one that I think who Junior Boogaloo, the first person I mean, you probably can't find this video because it's old. But the first time I seen someone do like a crazy isolation besides Poppin' John was this one, and I've seen. Uh, Junior Boogaloo do it. Shout out to Junior Boogaloo for being an inspiration. Um, but I see him use his arm. Remember we talked about this shoulder when it comes to our created, uh, created space. Boom, boom. So this is, because this joint is the only thing that's moving. It's isolated. At least to me it is. Bop, bop, bop. And so they're one at a time isolations. Arm, head, chest. Arm, head, chest. Arm, right? You know, and you can go with any any direction you can do if you want it. If you in practice, you can do, you know that stuff. Oh, the other isolation. I'll show you the Poppin' John isolation that uh, I was inspired by so much. Uh, but he does the one where he goes boop, 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 boop. You know that one. That's another form of isolation. Technique isolation. Other isolation for me is when you're isolating one part of your body, just like the joint. But for example, if I was waving. My whole body stopped except for this one arm. It's isolated, right? So bounce, ba, boom. Right? Isolation. Um. Oh yeah, my bad. So we're talking about chest. So that's what I was talking about isolation. So when you're isolating this joint right here, you can cause your chest to go forward and, and normal or back if you want. Right? This is my, this is my, I'm sorry, this is my body. Normal, chest up, normal, chest out. Remember, you always want to project outwards, up or out. Remember, when we, when I, when I hit, 
I imagine my energy is exploding around, from out of me. Like the music is coming out of me. That's my concept when I approach music. Um, but our hits help us demonstrate and visually show the music. Our job as hip hop dancers, especially poppers, is to be human visualizers. If you don't know what a visualizer is, if you have iTunes, you go over to the menu, you can see your visualizer up there. It's just it's gonna be on one of those. And you probably look up some visualizers on YouTube. But they help you they help you see the music. That's what dancers do. We're just we're just human visualizers, right? So we're gonna extend our chest on that snare, on the half beat. Bow. 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 So that was just us, you know, working on the isolation. Now we're going to um, use our abs and our lower back for resistance to help our body reverb or hit or pop. You know, people call it a lot of things. Hit or pop is the most common. Uh, yeah, you know, out here in Detroit, some of the OGs, not our dance OGs, but OGs call it ticking out here. You know, all oh, your tickets is good. You know how many times people say that to me? coming up but um and I was like nah bro I'm I'm just waving like yo take in the night look sit for those who are, uh, who don't know if you're not my student the difference between ticking and strobing and popping they're they're different techniques and styles so when we pop bow, right bow. when we strobe those are dime stops when we tick those are consecutive hits so if I'm just doing that, boop, 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 yeah, that's ticking. But you know, if I'm just doing this, that's waving, right? Who we talked about two weeks ago, I know what that is. Alright, so now we're gonna incorporate the actual abs and back to our chest so our chest our, body, our chest can hit. So on the half piece, snare. knowledge on me years ago. So we talked about the ball. So when I extend, I'm touching every single part of my ball right now, right? When I walk, the ball moves with me. Just like a gerbil. So I'm walking back and forth, I'm still in my ball. Alright? So before we even incorporate uh, hits into this, we're just going to go over movement. Now this movement is to help you express to yourself. I hit my ball differently than everybody else, right? Your objective is to do the ones that are comfortable to you. You can go in front Um. So don't even worry about hits. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have that extension, right? So I want you to move on the snares of the beat. I want you to meet the edge of your ball with the snare. So back. Bow. Bow. So remember, this ball is all around us. We're inside of it. So when my foot goes back, my knee goes forward, anywhere from the side. And this time, no, no hits. We're just meeting the beat. Bow. Bow. You know? And do movements that you don't have to really copy my movements. If you like my style, that's totally fine. You can, you can do my movements, but I'm all for your self-expression. Okay? So... 
when we talk about this ball, even walking on feet, is, in my opinion, is still technically hitting that. So, bow. Boom. Boom, right? Bow. Taking your time, still in this ball. So, remember, my, and my ball is just as big as I am. So, the tip of my, my hair right here, the ball goes all around my feet. It's like a orc field, kind of, if y'all know what your aura is. But, uh, be creative, be expressive, use every part that you have. You got, you know, knuckles, you got fingers, boom, boom, right? Even though my hands are still here, you know, psh, me closing my hands or, you know, doing this is, is a different expression, right? I knew uh, a popper named Pringles, shout out to Pringles, I believe she's from Indiana, but she had something called Zulu style where she would hit and she would hit like this. And I thought it was a dope thing. I couldn't do it without one Zulu. But she called it, you know, boo, bo, bo. And I was like, man. And there are other uh, people who hit with their hands close fisted. I believe uh, the brother Popula, his close fisted in it is just his style, you know. So when you're hitting, I'll go over a technique that I learned with hitting with my hands. But uh, mostly I want you just to be comfortable with your movements first. So, and with that being said, when we're hitting these points on the snares, don't forget to level change, right? This adds so much dynamics to your dance because, you know, I've been... <laughs> well, no, yeah. Never mind. Random thought. So, extensions. Boom. Don't be afraid to have a character because that's also a part of animation, right? So, um, we're gonna take these next couple minutes uh, just hitting, no, whoa, 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 no, not hitting, moving on the bass and the snare, hitting the points in your ball, okay? So, boom, ha, ha, ha. If you, don't, if you can't move that fast, that's fine, just hit the half beats, but we're gonna hit quarters, and this is just movement, all right? So, boom. Actually, no, it is too fast. I'll take my time. <laughs> On the snares, right? Bah. Boom. 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 I'm trying not to hit boom. Boom. Notice I'm using my elbows, and even when I extend my hand to my wrist, to my knuckles, to my fingertips, those are each in the different movements, but all part of one arm. If I go shoulder, elbow, wrist, knuckles, hands, it's just like a wave, but you can incorporate your hips into it, right? So you can go boom, ba, boom, ba, right? It's actually a little bit of combining just natural movement with a uh, concept of waving, but it's still, you know, natural movement. All right, um, we're gonna do that again this time. Let's let's try and throw some hits in there. And remember, have fun. Like if you ain't got your hits down, it's fine. Let's just have fun with these movements and your ball, right? Mm -hmm. Take a second, water check, water break. Like I said earlier in class, make sure you have your water so that you can stay hydrated. All right, so um, that was the ball. Uh, 
Remember, that concept is for your expressive freedom. Take it how you will, take it with a grain of salt. You don't have to use my ball concept or OG Crisco's ball concept. Uh, eventually, as you continue to dance, you're going to come up with your own concepts. Uh, but most importantly, it's about being free. Um, what else we to talk about? Oh. Isolation. Oh. Okay. Um, level change. We'll talk about dynamics and popping. Or just helping you with your level changes and popping. Uh, I used to do a lot of levels back in the day. I'm not saying that I'm uh, dated or anything, but uh, we're going to get into it. So, when you're hitting, for example, we talked about our Fresno last week, right? Wow, right? This is our, this helps with our movement from left and right, right? All right and left, all you want, got it. Just getting comfortable. This is me without my hits. Boop. Boom. So this is to help you get comfortable with the uh, the groove of popping, which is, you know, or at least like your boo boo style, because they will go all get in line. Boom. Right? Now once you reach beyond the, the Fresno point, you start to get more creative and stuff just being here. As you see, if you look at uh, Electro Boogaloo's do the Fresno, eventually they start here, and then eventually they start to change the movements. Bow. Boop. Bow. Right? So that's something to uh, help you with that, a little bit of dynamic movement. But when we're Fresnoing from side to side, don't be afraid to bend at the waist. Don't be afraid to bend at the waist. Don't be afraid to bend at the knees. Right? And if you can, you know, get down here. Be careful with your knees, though, my people. Uh, I, I, I came up in a time of popping where it was kind of frowned upon to be touching the ground, all and such. But uh, part of my generation ended up crushing that, you know, like we touch the ground all we want now. You know what I'm saying? We got so many uh, dope, amazing animators and poppers that are doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, I want to shout out to Salah because I felt like he really pushed ground movement and green tech. Salah and green tech really pushed ground movement for popping, at least for me. I mean, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other people, but those are just the two for me that come to mind right now. Uh, so, dynamic movement, for example, or yeah, with level changes. So, say we hit, we're in our fall, right? And we hit this angle. We're touching the edge right here and right here, right? So say you want to have your dynamic change. Boom. If you notice what happened right here, I brought my hands in, but I also brought my knees in. Helps with a little bit more whole visual appeal. Boom. You could do one at a time, bow, bow, or you can do them both at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Wow. See what I'm saying? So, boom, boom. And this is just me. I uh, that little movement right there. Um, I kind of get those little ankles from doing light feet. But uh, this is me lifting on the balls of my feet, like almost you trying to get my toes, but then pulling my knees in, like I gotta do the pee dance, right? You ever had pee? You're like, oh my goodness, I gotta pee. That sort of thing. So when you're when you're here, bow. Notice. Boom. All right. Notice uh, like I'm kinda on my side foot. You don't have to be on your side foot, you can just be here. But most importantly, if this move is a little too difficult, you, difficult for you, don't worry about it. I want you to be comfortable. Um, so all you, all you can do is just here and just drop. That's a level change. Right, but you know, I like to. Ever since my knees got better, I want to do all sorts of stuff, especially in light feet. So, so all I did was just change from side to side. If I didn't use my legs, it was just like this. Right? Easy, simple. Never do that again. So we're meeting here, edge of my ball, 
edge of the ball, right? Bring it down on the snare. Bop. Turn. Bop. Bop. We're only moving on the snare, right? I feel like this is some uh, K pop stuff. Uh, some of our interns always trying to put me up on K pop uh, at the studio. You know, shout out to for the BTS. What up, though, BTS? Um, so, once again, we're going to get down the snares. Bop. And you don't have to have your hands like mine. You can just be expressive with it. You know? And uh, so, arm in, turn out. In, turn out. In, turn out. This is one of some movements. Now, that's with upper body, legs. I do that, I don't just do this. I actually drop my love a little bit and I bend my knees for that dynamic change. Boom. Now you can go here, do a side, other side, if you want. Bop. 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 My bad. So we're gonna incorporate legs with it. Boom. 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 Go, go, yeah. From this side, this side. Go, 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 go. Right? Put it down on beat. Stop, stop. My bad. Here they can. Five, six, nine, nine. Get my, my concept down first. Boom, 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 boom. Oh. Open up first? Yeah, I guess I'm going. <laughs> I guess I'm going in reverse. So, bow, bow. Let's do them at the same time, why not? Bow, 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 bow. Right? Bow, 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 bow. bow. You know, so my hands are changing up. So, um, again, then back into creative movement. When we talk about creative movement, uh, look to your inspirations, whoever that may be or whatever that may be. Because when it came to animation, at least for some, they weren't trying to mimic people. They were trying to mimic robots, right? Or machines. So you can draw inspiration from anywhere if you know how to look, right? So what does Bruce Lee say? Be like water, right? That's where we got a, you know, a little bit of concept of waving from, kind of. But, uh, you know, inspired by water. If you know how it moves, if you if you watch how water moves, right? If you watch 
how robots move, depending on what kind of robot you want, it is up to you because this is your dance. If you want to have a robot that's just basic, you know, like that old school Jackson 5 robot, you know. There it is, that was it. Yeah, but there's all kinds that there's all kinds of robots out there. He's like, <laughs> uh, so don't don't feel that you're limited to the robots in science fiction. There are also like robots that are in the assembly lines in the factories. Like for example, the ones when uh they put lids on jars. If you see the jars come in, that the jar will come in, and a robot hand will drop and lift up, and the jar will pass. And it comes another one. But having that accuracy, if you're gonna go, you know, or you're doing on the snare. So, boom. You know, that just that little thing that. Uh, and there's also, um, well, there's new robots now, the ones that are like, you know, have you seen people beat up those robots just for their, you know, technological advancements? So there's a robot that kind of runs and walks like this. It just looks like it's just a backpack with arms <laughs> and legs. So those kind of robots are really stiff, you know, and they'll be like this. You know, but make sure you look at the robot that you want or the person style that you want. Don't buy it. Be inspired. Um, and other things. Other things in uh, like uh, animation. Because animation, there's so much to it, you know. And a lot of it is your imagination. So if you're watching this and you got a, a big imagination, good. Keep it. Don't ever lose it. Because it's important. We need that. Um... So when it comes to creative movements and creative like ideas, don't feel don't feel limited. Cause when I'm when I'm grabbing for creative space, you know, whatever I grab can be a solid object or it could be something moving. It's up to me what I want it to be. I have control over me and my imaginary environment. So if I'm looking at something going like this, like oh something I'm just gonna shirt. You know, zoom, something zooming, right? Zoom, like, I try and grab it, you know. I can't grab it, but what happens when I actually do grab one? Is it gonna, you know what I mean? But you have to be able to give 100% of those illusions, because if you don't believe it, who's gonna believe it, right? If you believe it, we'll believe it. That's all one thing that Pop and John told me with the, uh, an idea on his uh, creative space when he used to all that. I haven't seen him do this in a while, but he used to have a uh, big heavy box uh, animation where he will go. Or no, it was his fist that for some reason suddenly weighs a ton. So he'd be here, thank you, boom, and then he would, you know, his fist would be stuck. But that's his concept, his idea. So, you don't have to have your fist being stuck with me, it can. Make sure you give uh, props to those people you're getting ideas from, but you don't have to be a fist. You can have like a, a box of some sort or something that's just really heavy. But make sure your concepts that you do are very detailed because when you reach for a box, majority of the time you don't just have a box like this unless it's really light and you're gonna set it somewhere. If you notice, when I grab a box, my fingers will form to it so I can hold it, right? So if my fingers are formed to this box, when I release this box, when I don't have this box anymore, you should still kind of have the idea that I have a box in my hand, right? So I'm holding this box like this, fingers are bent. Boom. So. I imagine myself still holding my box because my fingers are taking form of where the box was. My hands have good muscle memory because I practice, you know, all these things. So if I grab here, I'm trying to lift this box. Now the box can be 
It could be a little box, or it could be a really big one. It could be a really light one, like, hey, where you want this box? Or it could be a really heavy one, you're holding like this, and you have to have that strain in your arms, in your face, because you want to give this illusion to your, you know, whoever you're dancing for. So if you're like, oh, I got a heavy box, oh no. Nobody's gonna believe that. You, you come in, you come in like this. Hard. Lift it up. Boom, right? You know, that was a box dropping. Actually, that was pretty cool. So, lift. You put the box back down, right? That's just something to, uh, that's just one concept. I know we talked about that a little bit last week. Uh, but yeah, another water break. Ooh, four minutes. What can I give y'all in four minutes? Oh, just closing. What's the importance of water? The importance of water is to keep yourself hydrated so your muscles continue to get this liquid that is much needed. It, t it water turns into blood when you drink it eventually, right? And for those of you that, for the water that you don't need for your internal organs, you know, it just goes out of you. And you know how it goes out, we don't talk about that. But, um, yes, water is very important as well as, uh, meditation. You know how we took three good deep breaths before, before class? When you're on your own time, try to do five. And take five minutes away from your phone. After this, don't put your phone away now. <laughs> After this, um, hydration, meditation, activity. This is the activity that we're having right now. For So for you to have a nice cool down after we are getting down, put your phone away, self-reflect, take deep breaths, right? Um, so a little more time. Ooh. Um, so just to recap, we uh, as we normally do, we go over our hits. Remember, oh, I was supposed to go over the hand hits, right? So the concept, I, I can knock that out in a couple minutes. So the concept that Papa John gave me for the hand hit, and I've been taught uh, plenty of different ways to hit my hands. I want you to find the way that best works for you because again, this is your dance. I'm just here to, you know, give you a little push in whatever direction you're trying to go in. So the concept that Papa John gave me, and there's probably videos on this too, uh, he, when he turns his hand completely over, but just how we add resistance with our abs and our, and our lower back for our chest hit, he adds resistance to his arm twisting, his hand, his wrist twist. So on the snare, like this, oh, right? This is just the basics of what he's doing. This is foundational movement of what he does. This is like you're playing a, you know, and right? Bow, bow. Just turning it simple, right? Turning your hand over, right? But now we start adding that resistance. Your wrist goes from a wrist turn to a wrist snap like this. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Forgive my left arm. I'm still, I'm still, or my left hand. I'm still working on this one. But you want to have a little bit of looseness in your fingers, so you have a little bit of that shock or reverb that gives out because that gives just a little bit more visual appeal. You know the hit. So if you're hitting stiff versus loose fingers, right? Ow. Ow. Yeah. So when we snap our, when we twist our wrist and we add that resistance, again, just like our chest hit, we want to turn our chest all the way out. We want to turn our hand all the way over, but we have to add that resistance. Ow. So it's a quick wrist turn or snap, right? Ow. Ow. Yes. Okay. Once again, went over uh, all these hits, wrists, arms, chest, legs. We talked about uh, animation, creative space, and creative movement. We talked about uh, crystal ball concept, 
Boo, boo, boo. Don't do that, it's still again. Uh, all these, remember, be free with these movements because you're dancing for yourself first before you're dancing for anybody else. Okay? So, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. You didn't have to be here. Thank you for giving your time today. My name is Dante Just Jones, Motor City Street Dance Academy, Detroit, Hill Till Infinity, Fresh Classics, All Love, All Light. I'll take it easy.